fragments were removed. I spoke with the chief nurse, Audrey Bell, in the Parkland Hospital sometime later. She told me about fragments removed from the president and Governor Conley that she turned over to the FBI. The bullet in its pristine state weighed 161 grains. Store-bought 161 grains. The bullet, that magic bullet, by the way, that was found, a maintenance man, go back to the to Parkland Hospital, a maintenance guy by the name of Tomlinson, finding the corridors by the ER blocked, bent down to move the stretcher so he could get to the men's room. And when he moved the stretcher, lo and behold, there was a bullet that nobody had seen before. That was a bullet which they claimed had gone all the way through, like I told you, into the thigh and then inadvertently, fortuitously, fell out spontaneously from Governor Conley's left thigh. Not seen by any of the doctors who worked on him in the OR or anything like that, okay? And yet we're told that all the fragments together weighed only 2.4 <clears throat> grains, which is exactly one and a half percent of the original weight of the bullet. Only one and a half percent from all the fragments. Total nonsense. Okay, um, there's another fragment. And here, my favorite slide. If God came to me and said, Wecht, you're going to give up all of your Kennedy stuff. I've heard enough from you for these past 60 years. Um, I'm going to let you keep one thing, one thing. And don't bullshit me, uh, Wecht, I'm God, I know. One thing. And I say, well, this is it. This is not my slide. This is their slide. Somebody on the Warren Commission had the sense, the decency, so, you know, well, let's do an experiment. And that's what you do. You get the, the, the alleged murder weapon and, the, and you get the same kind of uh, ammunition and you shoot. So moving in now from the left um, on the, as you're looking at it, you see the two bullets together. They are bullets that were fired into cotton wadding striking nothing. Um, that's what you do, either into a barrel of water or cotton wadding so that the bullet is not damaged in any way. And then the bullet second from the right, it looks like a little different bullet, doesn't it? It's the same bullet. It is widened a little bit and flattened even, and that is a bullet that broke one rib of a goat to simulate Conley's rib fracture. And the bullet at the far right is, the, is a bullet that broke a radius in a cadaver, in a human cadaver, okay? So, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, here you are. I'm the prosecutor. I'm wrapping up the case. I want to thank you. You've been marvelous. You've listened. You've been patient. You've been sitting here for weeks. Defense counsel, my respected defense counsel, they've tried to make fun of this by calling it the magic bullet theory. Um, so let me ask you, let me recapitulate because you may have forgotten. I want to show you if a bullet that breaks a rib second from the right can look like that and a bullet that breaks a rib the far right looks like that. Does anyone on the jury have any doubt or hesitation whatsoever in comprehending how a bullet that broke both a rib and a radius can look like the bullet at the far left? That's it. That's what you're looking at. Commission Exhibit 399, the magic bullet. There it is in all of its pristine grandeur. You like that? That's their experiment that they did. So you see the condition of the bullet, the weight of the bullet, and the trajectory of the bullet. Here it is. Look, the bottom left, that's the nose. No deformity. Breaking bones? When a bullet strikes bone, it gets deformed. Uh, uh, only the, to the right, lower right, a slight deformity from the impact of the firing mechanism. There's the bullet in, in its original state. The entire jacket, it's a copper jacketed lead core, military ammunition, one and a quarter inch in length, a quarter of an inch in diameter. That is the bullet. Does anybody have any trouble in understanding? Huh? 
I want you, when you get back home, to do me a favor. And yourselves, you got children and grandchildren. They're entitled to know about history. Make sure that the librarian at your kids' schools have purchased the 26 volumes. When I bought mine way back, it was $75. I don't know what it is now. Um, but one further admonition to the librarian. Make sure that they are property, property, properly cataloged. Make sure that they are where they belong, along with Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, and 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, okay? That's where they belong. Okay, now we have uh, some time. Uh, Robert Kennedy, um, those of you who are uh, over 50, whatever, and maybe those of you who are younger but follow this stuff, you will remember Robert Kennedy, U.S. Senator from New York then, um, was running for president, seeking the Democratic nomination. He had just won the primary in California, which was tantamount to getting the nomination. California wrapped it up. He was at the Ambassador Hotel. Um, next time you're in L.A., go there and see. Uh, I went there. I was a consultant to my good friend and colleague, uh, Dr. Tom Noguchi, Corner to the Stars, uh, on this case and other cases. I went there. So um, they said to Senator Kennedy, if we try to get you out through, the, through this crowd, you, you'll never make it. You know, it's like the adulation that you will have for me if my wife said, come on, we're going out through this crowd. You'd take all my clothing, right? And I'd never make it the hell out of here, okay? So it was the same thing. So they said, come on, we're going to go out through the back kitchen area. Back kitchen area. And uh, so he's walking out. Now, those of you, you'll remember then, seeing this and reading about it. So there was Sirhan Sirhan, a Palestinian immigrant, and he was there. And now here comes Senator Kennedy, flanked by a couple of security guards on each side, and Roosevelt Greer, uh, uh, a football player guard. And Sirhan shoots. What was the approximate distance is your recollection, those of you who have some recollection of this event, what was the approximate distance then when Sir Han shot at Kennedy as Kennedy was walking forward? Um, just, just yell out, just give me some, eight feet? Eight feet. Huh? Six feet, okay. You right on, tour, right on target with everybody else, eight feet, six feet, four feet, the distance from which the fatal shot was fired that killed Senator Kennedy was one to one and a half inches away from his head. And it also entered above and behind the right ear and it had a slightly forward trajectory. That was the fatal wound. You got to ask yourself, what is Weck telling me? I've never heard this before. How can that be? How can it be? Because you never heard it because it was never introduced. At the trial of Sirhan Sirhan, um, the prosecution, obviously, they weren't going to get into that. <laughs> they weren't going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. Uh, and the defense attorney, who was an experienced attorney, by the way, not some uh, snot-nosed kid right out of uh, uh, law school doing his first case, he never asked Dr. Noguchi, who had done the autopsy, what was the distance from which the shot was fired. And so the jury never knew that, never knew, never knew. And that's the Robert Kennedy case. Um, Sirhan was a shooter. Sirhan was there and Sirhan shot. Sirhan's gun held eight bullets. There were bullet holes for 12 bullets, more than eight. He never reloaded. Carl Eucher, the Mater D, knocked his arm, knocked the gun out of his arm, threw him to the ground. Who fired those additional shots? There was a second shooter, a second shooter. That is the Robert Kennedy case. Unbelievable. Um, there is a picture of the brothers. 
You know, uh, well, let me finish. I want to get it in before I have the Q&A. Um, there's Senator Kennedy with Dr. King. By the way, the House Select Committee on Assassinations of the United States Congress in 1977 created the House Select Committee on Assassinations, um, um, H C um, S C, and they created uh, different panels. One of them was forensic pathology panel, radiology, ballistics, photography, acoustics, and um, I was on the forensic pathology panel, and I was alone, the center. My colleagues, they were very critical of the autopsy report, very critical, but they said somehow they came to the conclusion that uh, they got it right. Yeah, um, 